Hello and welcome into my attic. When I spotted this white plastic vase in the Euro store, it immediately gave me French apothecary vibes of the dark and moody type. So I bought a couple, a small one and a bigger one, and I paid one euros and 30 cents altogether. So if you're someone that likes the French apothecary style and you'd like to make a couple of high-end looking vases of that style using something much, much cheaper though, then this video is just for you. So go grab a pot and let's get started. For my decoration I decided on a couple of clay roses and this um, leafy pattern made of it's kind of a material and plastics kind of together but anyway it was easy to glue down so you know I went with that. I just cut it to size and stuck it on with PVA glue, you can use any glue you prefer. Here I'm using cellophane to dab the decoration down onto the glued surface so I don't get sticky fingers. So I just carried on around the pot and then I let it all dry off for about an hour or two. So now it's time to create the paint mixture. You can use any consistency you prefer, thick and gritty or a more thinner consistency. It's all personal preference really. There are no hard and fast rules. The ingredients I use are always the same. I use a powder, in this case I'm using bicarbonate soda, but you can use other powders too, like cornstarch or talcum powder. I find bicarbonate soda to be the grittiest uh, powder and cornstarch to be the smoothest. I think talc is a little bit in between, I think. Anyway, you should start off with a one-to-one -one ratio and then make additions as you go along, like add a little more powder if it's too watery or add a little more water if it's too thick, etc. There are no strict rules, just make it creamy. So first I'm going to do the top. I'm going to dab it on on the inside and dab it on on the outside. Then I'll go dry it off with a hairdryer and then I'll start on the bottom part. So when I did the second coat, um, I exaggerated a bit with the mixture on top of the roses. The roses are delicate, um, you know, you want to keep that pattern. And I, I just covered it up a bit too much. And so the roses, you can't really see their roses <laughs> anymore. <laughs> they just look more like blobs. So be very careful of that. That was a mistake I've made. I, I was just too heavy handed, unfortunately. 
Yes, so I had the idea of buying a bag of pom-poms to use as a dabber. Uh, so far I've only used them in this project, uh, but you know, it worked pretty well to dab off the excess amount of paint. Um, and you know, they work out quite economical really because you get a big bag of them rather than keep uh, buying sponges all the time. Uh, so there's a little tip for you. So now it's all completely dry, I am going to add on my uh, green watery chalk paint um, like a green wash really uh, made of water and chalk chalky paint um, you know this again just do what you want to do this is at this stage you play around you add a bit of this color you add a bit of that color you dab it on here you dab it on there you know there's no rules you just do what you want to do So this is really lovely, it's all dry, but I would like it a little bit darker, so I'm going to add um, a black wash as well. Yes, yeah, so I like this colour now, but I would like to extenuate the uh, decoration a little more, uh, make it stand out a bit more, make it pop. So I'm going to um, dry brush with white. Oh yes, I love this now. So um, on to the next pot, which is slightly different. So with the next pot, I did the same preparation and the same paint mixture, except I added talcum powder rather than bicarbonate soda. And that seemed to work out a little bit smoother in texture. I then proceeded to dab on the mixture on the top part only. I did the inside and the outside and I did two coats. The smell of this talcum powder is so overpowering it gets a bit too much in the end and it lingers all the way through even when it dries and the pot is finished you can still smell the talcum powder. So if that's something you might like then you know it's a good thing. I was really inspired by this napkin. I mod podged it to the base of the pot but I couldn't paste it on as it was because a straight napkin on a curved pot wouldn't have lined up so I measured the pot's length and cut 5 cm strips in that length so that way I wouldn't have too much excess napkin 
hanging off. If you do this, make sure you don't separate the napkin before cutting. Cut the strips first and then separate the napkin. It's much easier that way. The first thing I did was brush on a whole layer of Mod Podge onto the pot and I dried it off with a hairdryer. Then after that I began to Mod Podge the napkin onto the pot. This way you just get a little bit more adhesion. As you mod podge the napkin onto the pot, try and get the napkin to match up with the other piece of napkin. Um, you will inevitably have to overlap in some places, but it's not that much of a problem really. So now it's all dry, it's time to add a wash. So here I have made a green wash and you can use acrylic paint or chalk paint, whichever you prefer. I dabbed the green wash all over the pot until I was satisfied. So I'm happy with this, but I, I could leave it here, but I think I'll add a black wash as well. I really like it with the black wash, but it's nice without the black wash as well. I, it's really hard to decide, but you know, it's just personal choice in the end. I think I did a bit too much black wash, so here I am dabbing off some of the black wash with a piece of wet cotton wool. So the napkin on the pot still feels like napkin of course. So to reduce the papery feeling of the napkin, I'm going to add a cornstarch mixture over the napkin which will help just a little bit to give it a smoother and silkier feel to the touch. This mixture is transparent, but it does also give a slightly cloudier look. It feels so smooth and dries so quickly.
So the vase is looking nice like this, but at the last moment I thought I'd give it another black wash. Unfortunately, I didn't film it, but you will see the result in the reveal. <laughs> 